Okay, then this last set of video, we focus on the characteristics of the bond. And I'll go over them rather quickly because um, a lot of these materials and the details is included in your textbook. So I'm actually going to highlight uh, the important information that you need to study and learn more from the textbook. So this, this, this of the video does not include all the definitions, but rather highlights the, uh, the important characteristics. So the bond intenture is the contract between the company and the bondholders. And what the important, the, this contract is important because it should, it get, um, it laid out all the important characteristics of the bond. So we talk about the coupon rate, the coupon day, payment day, face value, maturity, and so forth. Um, it also tells you how much money the company was bar had borrowed all at once. So that is the amount of the bond that is issued. And it may include different characteristics. So as you look at these characteristics, the important question to ask is, is the characteristic advantageous to the bondholders or to the company? If it, the, the characteristic is advantageous to the bondholder, then the company will be able to pay a lower coupon rate. If the, advantageous, if the characteristic is advantageous to the company, then you'll be able to pay a higher, then you'll have to pay a higher coupon rate to attract investors. So for example, one of the one of very um, common characteristic is security. So this is like a home mortgage. If you compare your uh, or a car or a car loan. So when you take out a home mortgage, you use the house as a security. If you take out an auto loan, the car is used as a security. And you notice that the interest rate you pay on a mortgage or a car loan is quite a bit lower than the interest rate you pay on your credit card. And that's because credit card, there's no, no property used as security. So when there is security, it's better for the investor. And therefore, the company will be able to offer a lower coupon rate. Sinking fund provision um, protects investors. Uh, in theory, a company does not have to pay off its face value until maturity date, but that represents a large amount of money. And investors may be worried that the firm may not have enough money to pay them off on maturity date. In a sinking fund provision, they force the company to put aside money, um, a little bit of money each year, so that on maturity date, they would have saved up a significant portion of the face value that they need to um, repay investors. Call provision is different. Call provision allows the company uh, the option to pay off the bonds early. So this is a prepayment option. And since this is an option and not an obligation, the company will only choose to call the bond if it is to their advantage. So therefore, a bond that has a call provision will typically carry a lower coupon rate. The same goes for covenants. They are put, these are protective covenants. They are designed to protect the investors. There are positive covenants and negative covenants. Positive covenants are things that the company must do. So for example, the company must maintain a times interest earns ratio of X percent. Uh, negative confidence are things that a company must not do. For example, you may say that a company must not pay dividend un until it has pay off all interest obligations. Another important characteristic of a bond is uh, bond ratings. Bond ratings are determined by bond rating agencies. These are, in theory, independent third parties. Um, since the financial crisis, there's a lot of concern over the true independence of these agencies because in, in practice, the company pay these agencies to rate their bond. So, um, and there were a lot of um, debate whether or not the agencies misclassify the bond during the, uh, some of the bonds during the financial crisis. Um, as of today, the rating agencies are still the, um, the only source of bond rating. So there has not been a new way to ascertain the credit worthiness of companies. So this bond, the ratings that bonds and companies get, and this is something that's important, the rating for a bond can be different from the rating on a company. And that is because of the different characteristics. So for example, a bond that is secure with a mortgage, uh, a mortgage bond that is secure with a 
with a building may carry a higher rating than the bond of the a general occupation bond, meaning a bond that is just um, uh, that doesn't have any security. Uh, again, that's similar to your personal finance example of your auto loan in interest rate versus your um, credit card interest rate. So the bond rating agencies, um, they give bond ratings ranging all the way from triple A, double A, single A, and then down to um, triple A, triple B, double B, single B, C's, D's, and, and so on. There's an important classification um, along the line, and that is what we consider or what the industry consider investment grade bond. An investment grade is a bond that is rated triple B or higher. Any, any bond that is lower than uh, double B or lower is considered junk bond. Um, investment grade bond is, uh, is there's only one name for it. But when you go when a bond goes into the junk bond status, um, there are many names that is used to refer to it. Sometimes these are called speculative bond. Sometimes they are called high yield bond. So be sure you know all the variants, var various names that is attributed to this type of investment. The rating focuses on default risk. So the risk of the bond, the higher the default risk, the lower the bond rating, and therefore the higher the, um, the, the coupon rate and the yield to maturity. Um, another important consideration for the investment grade classification is because a lot of government agencies, as well as retirement funds and pension funds, they are restricted from investing in bonds that have lower than the investment grade. So once a, com a company's bond get a bond rating of double B or lower, it lose a lot of potential buyers. So the market for this bond, for junk bonds, becomes very illiquid, meaning that it's very hard to sell those bonds when you need to. So speaking of different types of bonds, so first of all, we want to uh, look at who issues the bond. The US government is by far the largest issuer of bonds. So government bonds can be direct treasury. So these are bonds directly issued by the US government. Or this can be agency bonds. The largest one is probably uh, the Federal Housing Authority, FHA. So those are bonds issued by an agency of the government, but are not guaranteed by the government. Another important source of bond is municipal bonds. These are issued by state or local municipalities. So it can be, uh, for example, Salem State issues bonds. Uh, your, your local um, county or town may issue bonds to finance schools um, or bridges. And these are called municipal bonds and they are tax exempt meaning that the interest income on these bonds you, uh, you do, uh, f are not subject to federal or state tax. Um, that's important because as an investor, it's your after-tax return that, that is, that is um, what you can take home. So by giving this municipal bond tax exam status, the government is helping the local authority. So when you're comparing the taxable bond and tax exam bond, you want to compare their after-tax yield. So that is your taxable yield. So this is your before tax yield times one minus the tax rate. So if you have a corporate bond that has a yield of say 10% and you have to pay 30% of that in tax, that means you only get to take 7% home as your after tax yield. If you have a bond that's tax exempt, that bond can offer you 7% and you will be competitive. So what the end result is that a corporate bond will have to offer a higher return in order to compete with municipal bonds. Another important characteristics of bonds is the type of coupon. Um, it can range anywhere from zero coupon bond, which are bonds that sell at a very deep discount, uh, to bonds that sell at the market rate. Um, on the other, on the other extreme is floating rate bond where the coupon rate can actually change over time. And usually for floating rate bonds, the coupon rate is tied to some well-known index, um, such as the prime rate or the interba interbank, um, the London interbank offer rate, uh, LIBOR. Uh, those are very common benchmark that is used to adjust floating rate bonds. 
I want to talk a little bit more about a special type of government bond. It is issued by the U.S. government and is called Treasury Inflated Protection Security, or TIPS. This is the only bond that, pro that um, protects against inflation. And because it protects against inflation, the return on TIPS is actually a real return. We'll talk about that more in the, in the, in the, uh, in the next module. But I want to talk about how TIPS works. So for TIPS, the par value, this is very unusual, actually changes based on differences or changes in the consumer price index. So CPI stands for consumer price index. The consumer price index is what we use to measure inflation. So let's say at the time of issue, the bond has a favorite, a par value of $1,000. Then as the consumer price index change, so does the par value. The new par value is the original $1,000 times with the relative difference. So the new CPI divided by the CPI at the time of issue. So if the new CPI increases, the new par value, the par value will also increase. So that protects the, the investors from increases in inflation. And the coupon payment, because coupon payment is based on face value, it also changed. So the coupon rate on tips remains constant, but because the par value changes according to the new CPI, the coupon payment itself also changed. All these characteristics together help determine the interest rate that a company has to pay to borrow money. So the first factor is the real rate. This is, this is what you learn in economics. The real rate depends on the supply and demand for money. Um, there is very hard to find real rate um, in the world. The only example is tips, what we just, what we just saw. Um, and the reason why TIPS is as close to the real rate as there is is because it's guaranteed by the U.S. government. So it has very low default risk. It's virtually default risk free and is protected against inflation. So is and, and for that reason, due to maturity on TIPS is typically very, very low. It's the real rate, um, real interest rate. Um, for all the other investment that is not protected against inflation, um, we will also have to add an inflation premium. The Fisher effect describes the relationship between nominal rate, real interest rate, and inflation rate. So nominal rate is what you would typically find in any interest quotation with the exception of tips. So if you see a, an APR being reported by a credit card company or a CD, uh, return in a bank, all those are nominal rates. Now, in addition to compensating investors for inflation premium, they may also demand an interest rate risk premium. We talk about the factors that affect interest rate. So whether a bond has a longer maturity, lower coupon, with a call provision, all those factors will increase the interest rate risk, and therefore that bond will carry a higher interest rate risk premium. In addition to that, the default risk is also important. So most of the time, the default risk is represented by bond ratings, and bond ratings take into account security of the bond, seniority, and whether or not there's a sinking fund provision. We also saw that municipal bonds do not have to pay tax, so they don't carry a tax premium. But a corporate, ban a corporate bond is subject to tax, so it carries a tax premium. Liquidity premium is the last premium, and it refers to how easy it is to sell a bond if you need to convert it into cash. So we talk about the difference between triple B investment grade bond and junk bond. So if you your if the bond is a junk bond, that means the market is much thinner, so the bond is not liquid, and that bond will carry a higher liquidity premium. So the yield to maturity of the bond is the sum of all these factors. So the real rate is the same for all securities. The inflation premium is also the same for all security. Um, however, interest rate risk, default rate, default risk premium, 
and taxability and equity premium, those vary depending on the individual bond's characteristics.